Whenever I tell family or close friends who know me quite well that I got a new TV, they tend to expect that I got the best of the best. An 8K OLED paper thin hyper realistic masterpiece or something like that. Then when I show them the TV that I did buy, they're often more confused, disappointed or horrified. Let's see why. I'm Eples Fox here to make tech easier and more fun today showing off my television and gaming setup. This is pretty close to the ultimate gaming setup for my childhood dreams. Well, what am I stalling for? Let's head on over to the living room. I've ditched the crappy Magnavox CRT that I've had since I was a baby and picked up a beautiful Sony Trinitron WEGA HD CRT TV. Specifically the Trinitron KV34HS420. This thing is a boss, and I got it from a local Craigslist sale for only $50. The best TV value anyone could possibly get, IMO. We'll come back to this in a second, but it's also worth noting that the guy I bought it from also gave me the TV stand with it. It was supposed to be on wheels, but he only had two of them. Kind of a shame, but it was free. I will hopefully upgrade entertainment centers in the future, as I've already overloaded this one, as you'll see. This has two levels of shelves with cable management holes in the back. Now, for a normal, casual home user, the side shelves are meant to hold movies or music or games or something. But I need all the surface area for game consoles I can get. I've got every console that I've ever played shoved in there, pretty much. NES, Super NES, Nintendo 64, Wii U, PlayStation 1 Slim, my modded PS2 Fat, PS3 Slim, Xbox 360 Slim, and the Xbox One, along with the Atari Anniversary and Sega Genesis Anniversary collection boxes. The only things missing are the Nintendo GameCube and the original Xbox. I have actually recently picked up an original Halo themed Xbox and I'm waiting to mod it up before I install it in this setup, but I haven't picked up a replacement GameCube just yet. My PlayStation 4 was originally fit in here, but I've since moved it back to my desk so I can use it for recording, capture card testing, streams, and so on. Someone's probably noticing a severe lack of Sega. I've never really owned any Sega consoles, so I have the Sega Genesis collection box and hopefully I'll be able to add more to the collection at some point. I do love my retro hardware. Since the shelves are already fully loaded with consoles, my massive game library is stored on this huge game shelf from Wayfair. My parents actually bought this for us when we moved into our first and previous apartment, and this was in the background of virtually every video in 2016. Now it does a good job holding up hundreds of Blu-rays, DVDs, games, game cartridges, game discs, everything. I also have a few huge disc binders full of games that I don't have cases for as well. But how can I hook up so many consoles at once? How can I even hook up things like the Xbox One and PS4 to CRT TV in the first place? This magical beast was one of the last CRT TVs ever produced, the last grasp at the market before flat screens fully took over. As such, the TV actually supports input signals up to 1080i and even has an HDMI port on the back. This thing looks sharp and crisp with video signals from 240p on the original consoles all the way up to 720p from the modern Xboxes and Playstations. It's got amazingly deep blacks and vivid colors and make every game look great. Plus, many games like Silent Hill and other horror games from the PS2 era were designed with this look in mind, so the atmospheric look intended can only be obtained with a TV like this one. However, the modern consoles, the PS4 and the Xbox One, likely won't be staying in this setup for long. I have my old 1080p flat screen upstairs in the bedroom that will serve them much better. The issue is any game consoles outputting higher than 480p over HDMI have a huge overscan crap applied to them which isn't fixable without crazy service menu hacks. And even then it gets upconverted to 1080i with a very obvious flicker that gives me a headache within like 5 minutes. It's pretty frustrating, but this is why we have HD TVs after all. The same consoles such as the 360 or PS3 outputting over analog signal and any analog native consoles do not show this issue nor give me headaches so I'm confident in dividing up the games. I honestly don't play the Xbox One much anymore anyway, and the PS4 stays at my desk for more hardware testing, as I mentioned before. On the back, the TV has a few standard composite and S-video inputs, a couple component inputs, and a single HDMI port, along with the RF signal adapter. It can display low resolutions in 4x3 better looking than any TV I've ever seen, and does a great job at zooming in or stretching signals to widescreen if you're into that sort of thing. I have a composite and S-video switcher from my original gaming setups as a kid that most of the classic consoles run through, and the PS2 and original Xbox use component inputs for high quality 480i and 480p output. On this, I've also attached the red and white to 3.5mm adapter that came with my original Turtle Beach X11 headset. 
This runs to the analog input on the mixer console for my SteelSeries H wireless headset. The modern consoles run through this 5-port monoprice HDMI switcher, which also splits the audio via optical to my SteelSeries H wireless unit. I can't listen to everything via the headphones, but I can listen to most systems this way. I don't use them most of the time, however. The speakers on my TV are actually very nice sounding. The previous owner clearly didn't blast them out for years on end, and they are quite pleasant to game with. I've also got a few plastic totes for my horde of controllers, and the end table features charging docks for most of the common wireless ones that I use. I keep my PS3 and PS4 steering wheel set under the table as well. I also just recently picked up a nice JVC, VCR, and DVD player combo unit that I will want to integrate into the setup at some point, but I don't currently have the room for it. This is a kick-ass setup, and I'm super grateful to be able to put it together. This is essentially the ultimate dream gaming setup I always wanted as a kid. Everything hooked up all to one TV that I can just switch through. For the future, I want to upgrade entertainment centers so I can more comfortably fit the consoles and maybe get some LED flare going on too. And I want to get a nice AV receiver to run everything through a proper speaker setup. But for now, in my humble apartment, this is a dream come true. It's been so great to escape from the madness of the world nowadays to put some hours into Baldur's Gate or Metal Gear Solid on PS2 and actually game. No DLC, no pre-orders, just fun. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do you have an awesome gaming setup? Let me know in the comments down below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed, subscribe for more videos like this. I'm Fox. I'll see you next time. I'm gonna go play some games.